Hey friends, it's the middle of winter and life is moving at a slower pace. Why not try something new and take that downtime to can or preserve something delicious for your family, friends, and loved ones? We traditionally associate canning with the summer or fall months. They're a very busy, hectic season of putting up food for the winter. However, there are some excellent and delicious preserve recipes that we tend to overlook that have produce that is seasonal for the winter months. So join me in the kitchen today as we get preserving some of my favorites. Hi everyone, well, how are you all doing? Thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen today. How are you doing? I hope you are healthy and well. Also, what scents and flavors do you associate with the winter months? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it is citruses, root vegetables, spices. So today I am so excited to find my healing in the kitchen and we are gonna do some small batch preserving of a delicious orange marmalade, onion jam, and spiced pear butter. I'm also going to show you a simple method for preserving one product that is overflowing on our Canadian shelves right now, and that is apple cider. It can be bought at a super discount price and preserved for later. But first, let's start with one of my most favorite things to spread on a warm homemade biscuit, orange marmalade. For this recipe, you're going to need three oranges, two lemons, some surto or some sort of thickener, and about five cups of sugar. Nice and sweet. And this batch is going to make three jars here. Each of these jars holds two cups. This is called a pint jar. I'm starting here by zesting all of my citrus. So if you have a zester at home, you could do this, or you could also just use any sort of grater to get the yummy outside peelings off. As I'm doing this, guys, pop that thumbs up button below if you find baking, preserving, cooking more relaxing in the winter than in the summer. And I felt so happy and free when I realized I don't have to do all of my preserving and canning in the summer and fall. I can save some for winter when I'm feeling more relaxed and it's less hectic. Okay, so take all of that zest and put it in a large saucepan. To that, you're going to add about a cup and a half of water, as well as one teaspoon of baking soda. So you're going to bring this to a low boil and then turn it down to simmer and cover it for about 20 minutes. And while that is simmering, let's work on the rest of the recipe. So take your citrus that you have zested and I want you to peel off most of the pith. That is just kind of the heavy peeling part that's all white. You don't want that as part of your recipe. So I'm just taking a paring knife to peel that off and just to leave mostly fruit. Now take the fruit you have left over and dice it up into small pieces. Making sure that if you have seeds in your fruit, I had seedless oranges, but I had seeds in my lemons. Make sure you remove the seeds when you're chopping them up. You definitely don't want those in your marmalade. And then include the juices and all of the fruit that you chopped up. So I like to use a cutting board that has a bit of a well around it to collect the juices. All right, you can see now here that our zest is nice and softened and the water has become flavored by them. So add to that all of your chopped fruit. And you're going to bring that to a boil and cook the fruit for a couple of minutes so that it's softened. Five to 10 minutes is usually more than enough. And now here you see that our citrus is cooked. My home smells so delicious at this point. 
To that, you're going to add your five cups of white sugar. If you're going for a little healthier of a marmalade, you definitely can use honey at this point instead of sugar. I know there are people that are sensitive or allergic to cane sugar, so honey is a great substitute. So we bring that to a boil until all of that sugar is dissolved and leave it at a rapid boil for about one minute. Now let's turn that completely off and remove our pot from the heat. At this point, you're going to add your liquid Serto or pectin, whatever brand you're using is just fine. This is 85 milliliters of liquid pectin. And then you're going to stir and skim that fruit. If there's any foam at the top, you're gonna to skim the foam off. And I stir that and let it cool for about 20 minutes. This will just help keep the fruit from floating so that your jam is more even. These are some of the tools I use. I will link them below, a special magnet, a non-metallic tool, a ladle, and tongs to grab the jars. While my jam was cooking, I also have my stove set up. Here are my new snap lids and rings that are sanitizing. I've got lots of jars in the oven. It's on 250 degrees with a couple inches of water in there, 250 Fahrenheit. And I have my hot water bath set to boil right here. If you want a more detailed explanation of the different methods for proper canning, I definitely have videos out about that that I will link in the description below or up here that when you're done this video, you can watch them. I have a video about no water bath canning as well as water bath canning. So have no fear, I'm here to help you out. So take three pint jars out of the oven, remove the water from them by just dumping them down the sink. And then we're going to start filling our jars with our gorgeous orange marmalade. I love this funnel that fits especially in my mason jars. Use that non-metallic tool to get out any bubbles. Then you're gonna wipe the rims of the jar to make sure they're clean and grab your snap lids and rings and securely put them on your jars. Not too tight, not too loose. Next, we're going to pop our canning rack in that boiling water and we're going to lower our jars in for 10 minutes only. Just 10 minutes will do it, you guys. You can do this with the non-hot water bath method. Um, I have a video all about that, but sometimes I like to use the hot water bath just to really ensure that I'm going to get a seal, especially if I'm giving it away as a gift. And after 10 minutes, they're ready to be taken out and we're just going to set them in a cool, dry place to seal and leave them there for 24 hours. Did you hear that pop? That's how you know they are sealed. Canning supplies. You may be wondering if you're watching this video, where in the world you're going to find snap lids, canning jars, rings in the dead of winter, because a lot of stores only carry them seasonally in the summer. So you have a few options. One is to buy your supplies online. I will do my best to put as many links as I can down below um, where you can buy them online and have them shipped to your house. Another tactic is to check local thrift stores. They often have mason jars there, or even some local grocery stores will carry canning supplies year round. So just ask a manager. A lot of times they will have them or they'll have them in the back but probably my favorite thing to do, which does take some planning ahead, is to buy your supplies the whole year's worth in the summer. So I knew I would be doing some fall and winter canning this past spring when I went to buy my snap lids. So I made sure that I bought enough to last me the whole year, not just to last me a couple months. So if you're thinking ahead, you might just wanna stock up and get more than you need in the moment. Moving on to our beautiful spiced pear butter. 
I'm using here about two to three pounds of pears. You'll notice these are Bartlett pears and they're over ripe. We also need some lemon juice and I have a few spices like ginger root and a few other things I'm gonna add down the road, but this is what you need to start. So chop up those pears, seeds, stems, skin and all. No need to de-seed or take the skins off guys. This is gonna be easy peasy. And then you're gonna chop up about one inch of a ginger root and add that to the pot with the pears. Now add an entire cup of lemon juice, as well as two cups of water. So you're going to get that on your stove and bring it to a nice boil. Cover with a lid, and you're going to want to boil these for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however long it takes to get them soft. It could depend on how ripe your pears were to begin with, but you can see here mine are nice and soft. I'm gonna put them into my saucer mill, my food mill. Mine, I love this kind. We just bought this at our local farmer's market. My daughter here is helping me out today. They love to turn the crank. And basically what happens with this mill is all the good juices and sauce comes out one end and then the skins and seeds and stems and junk come out the other. I'll try to link something similar to this below for you, but if you don't have a sauce machine like this, no worries, you can just use any typical um, food strainer or something where you can just kind of strain it and um, press the sauce out and keep the guts contained in the strainer. Okay, so to this we're going to add one teaspoon of nutmeg and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we're gonna take the zest of half of a lemon. Add to this two cups of sugar. Again, you could substitute honey here. Give that a good stir. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook this on the stove slow and low. So I'm turning it way down to simmer and I'm gonna leave it there for a couple hours. And you'll see here, you'll know it's ready when it turns a very dark color and it's nice and thick. I love this spiced pear butter, especially in the winter on a charcuterie board, it's so good. Or just slathered on a nice piece of toast for breakfast in the morning. So let's fill our jars. We're going to do a similar process to the orange marmalade. We're just gonna put them in the canner for 10 minutes. I like this pear butter just as much as apple butter. It's so sweet and good. Okay, next, my favorite recipe of this bunch, and that is a sweet balsamic onion jam. This is kind of more of a savory. So we've got two pounds of onions here, balsamic vinegar and olive oil. So you're gonna chop up all of these onions, just slice them actually, and put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in a pan. Get these onions frying and you're actually going to fry them until they're browned. we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of sugar, three quarters of a cup of balsamic vinegar. This is what's gonna give you the most delicious taste to this jam. You're going to bring this to a boil so that it kind of gets really thick and caramelized. Also, I'm adding in here a teaspoon of rosemary and a teaspoon of dried thyme. This is gonna give it a really good savory, herby blend as well as one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Mm -hmm. 
Now that it's nice and candied and glazed, I'm gonna put them in containers. And I'm gonna show you here, you guys, that you can definitely freeze or refrigerate preserves. You don't have to process or can them. So I have a container here I'm gonna to return to my mom that she gave me something in, and I'm gonna return it to her filled with this sweet jam. And I'm gonna keep a jar for myself. You will find that this is so good spread on crostini with melted brie or just as a topping for like a burger or something. It's just this gourmet deliciousness that anyone loves. Okay, so be honest, how many of you have a whole ton extra of some of this stuff after your holiday family gatherings. This is Wellesley apple cider, my very favorite from Wellesley, Ontario. But maybe if you are from the north, you live near an apple orchard that you can get super cheap cider. Or I know in our area, a lot of farms will have apple trees and you can take your own apples to a cider press and get it made into cider very inexpensively. And maybe we don't have the freezer space because a lot of people do freeze apple cider. Maybe we don't have the space for that. So canning is one way you can do it and you guys are gonna be shocked at how easy it is to can your own apple cider. So let's do that now. So take your apple cider and pour it into a very large pot. You're going to bring this just to, until it's to a boil. You'll see here I've got my warm jars out of the oven and I'm going to fill them all the way up with my apple cider. So you'll notice here, I'm just keeping it natural. I didn't add any sugar, any spices, nothing. Just pure apple cider. Once they're full, let's wash them off and get those rings on. Similar to our jam preserves, this only takes 10 minutes in a hot water bath because there's so much natural sweetness in it. It doesn't need any longer than that. And here we go. I should have mentioned if you do want to process the sweet onion jam, um, definitely you can do that. It's just going to take a little longer, about 15 to 20 minutes because it does have a lower acidity rate than sweet things. And then once these have sat a while, you wanna check them to make sure that they are sealed. If you press the middle and it stays down and it doesn't pop back up, you know it is sealed and you're good to go. Something I like to do is I actually will remove the rings for storing them in my fruit cellar or in my cupboard. And then I can reuse those rings for making other things as well. They don't have to be stored with a ring on them. And then you can also kind of wash the jars, make sure they're not sticky from being in the canner. Look at that delicious marmalade. What do you think? Would marmalade loving Paddington Bear approve? This is one of my kids' favorite story characters and why we love marmalade so much. Oh, this is just making me so happy. I love, love, love winter preserves. I am so looking forward to enjoying these preserves with my family and also giving them away as gifts. I hope there was a recipe here for you. And if you liked these, then try out some of these other videos of mine to the side. Homemade apple butter, more canning videos. Join me there as we find some joy in simple living in the kitchen. I can't wait to see you guys again. For the least, this is Jen. What if the world had more of your smile?